Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So, I am going to do a video about how to actually work on yourself. Because I always tell you guys to work on yourself, work on yourself, work on yourself. You're going to get better results if you work on yourself, if you know who you are, if you know what you deserve, know what you want, etc. Right? So today I'm going to address how to start working on yourself right after this. All right, the first thing that you can do is to listen to yourself. If something is making you uncomfortable, figure out why that thing is making you uncomfortable. Maybe it is something that needs to change in your life. Maybe it's that career that you know that you need to leave. Maybe it is that relationship really is a dead end relationship. It's not working out. You need to stop holding on to it. Get over your fears. You have to deal with these things. Listen to what I always talk about the gut feeling. Listen to what your gut is actually saying to you. Figure out why it's making you uncomfortable because the thing that you need to be focusing on is a shift in what you should be focusing on and why you must start to focus on that thing. The second way to start working on yourself is to identify your problems, i.e. I always talk about your baggage. That is the same thing, your problems. Identify the root causes of them. Why did you start gaining all of that weight? Why can't you speak up for yourself? Why can't you say no, even though you want to say no? What happened in your past, that thing that you keep and weigh down low that you never want to think about? Why is it that you never want to think about that thing? That is more than likely the root of your problems and why you cannot move forward in your life why you're having self-esteem issues again why you have gained so much weight why you are having trouble accepting who you are right now in your life why you're having body image issues deal with the root causes and the root problems i.e. your baggage the third thing to do is to start to practice identifying your feelings. Because once you know what they are, it actually is less scary to deal with these things and to confront these things. And, and the more times you, that you do this, the easier it will be. And anytime something that makes you scared and uncomfortable, you'll be able to recognize these feelings and actually deal with them much faster. The fourth thing that you can do is just to stand up for yourself more often. Don't let the people outside of your world, outside of your circle, especially those haters out there, don't let them get into your head. Don't let them get into your head. So stand up for yourself. Be able to know that you know that you know that you know what you know. And they can't take that from you. Don't let them easily be able to get into your head. And then they're changing your mind about something that you felt so strongly about before you talked to them. And now you're kind of weak minded behind it because they got into your mind. And now you're like, you know what? That was stupid. Why would I want to try to change my career? Why would I think that I'm beautiful? Whatever it is, don't let anybody get into your head about it, especially when you know that you know that you know that you know what you know. The fifth thing to do is just to be honest about what you think, because when those haters come and trust me, they are going to come because that's their job. Their job is to hate on you and get you to second guess the things that you know. So be honest about what you think. So when they do come, they don't change your mind. The sixth thing to do is actually just to have a plan about something, a goal about something. It doesn't have to be something grandiose. It can be a very small goal at first. And really, that's where you really want to start is a small goal because once you start to attain the very small things, then you'll be able to move, gradually move on to a, a larger thing that you want to attain. And then an even bigger thing and an even bigger thing is actually going to help you build your confidence. But start with something small first, attain that goal, and then start with another, I'm sorry, and then move on to the next thing. So let's just go with weight gain because most people talk about that. So you gained 15 pounds 
pounds. Actually, I'll talk about myself in this particular thing, right? Um, because I actually gained, your girl gained 30 pounds after the baby. And now I'm trying to get back into my workout routine. And I'm actually already down 12 pounds. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. However, it took me a while to get to this journey as far as starting to lose the weight. And then I started and stopped and life keep getting in the way. And I'm trying to figure out my schedule and everything, right? So what I'm doing now in order to reach the small goals is to say, okay, I, in I, I incorporated drinking more water into my life. So, okay, I lost, I lost those pounds, right? And then now the next thing is to see if I can actually get rid of some of the sugar in my life. Maybe not everything, right? But definitely the things that I can get rid of, get rid of some of the sugar, right? Okay, so now I'm attaining that. I'm seeing some more pounds drop off. And, and, and not only that, then I started walking every day. So I'm attaining all of these small goals. And at some point, the 30 pounds will be gone because like I said, I'm already down to 12. Okay, right. And that hasn't even been, um, actually it's been about two months since, I, since I'm able to get this thing under control because I was having body issues, right? Has nothing to do with my spouse. Like I want to look good for him, but it really has to do with me and the way that I want to look. And I knew that I was getting out of control in my weight when I had to buy another size of jeans because I just don't know. I've been an eight for many, many years, and now I'm a 12. Not I don't personally like the way that a 12 looks on me. However, because I've lost those 12 pounds already, my jeans that I purchased are already, I'm having to um, tighten up my belt loop a little bit more. So, of course, that's making me feel better about myself, and um, I'm more conscious about the things that I'm putting into my body because... I want to drop this weight. I need to get back down to my size eight. Okay. So it's the small things that you incorporate into your life and then you build and build and build and build. Before I move on to the next thing, I have to say that the hardest thing it really is, is to start. Most people get stuck up here. They get stuck up here in the planning stages. And because they are so afraid of implementing this thing, how is it going to go? And really the fear is because what if it don't work out? But sis, what if it do? Bruh, what if it do? The hardest thing is getting started. So you have to push past that fear and just do it anyway. I've been on YouTube for over three years and that first video was atrocious in the fact that all of this personality that you see now was not there. It was more mechanical and robotic and I have to say that I've always given quality information if I have to say so myself but it was definitely more subdued and I was just afraid to kind of look into the camera. My very first video, I remember I was looking down because I had my notes and I didn't memorize anything. And so I was reading most of it. And um, that was what the comments were like. Uh, actually, actually, it wasn't any comments in there about me looking down because I said it. I was like, oh, um, you know, I'm looking down at my notes and I didn't realize some of the things that I needed to do. Like as far as, um, like I said, memorizing the stuff and being able to really have it in my bones to know the information. I was just starting out. I was camera shy and I was more talking like this and hey, and this is what you do. And number one, you do this. And number two, you do. So all of this personality that you see, it's always been there. But as soon as I got in front of the camera, it was no longer there. Right. So. That's all I'm saying. Get started. You'll get better the more times that you do it. And I will say that I feel like this is the best that I've been the more that I continue to do YouTube. The more that I continue to um, make and create more videos and video topics, the better that I will be in front of the camera. The seventh way to start working on yourself is to create an inspirational space. It doesn't have to be an entire room. It could be like the area where you have your computer desk. It could be your bathroom. It could be wherever you feel the most creative. Make it a wonderful spot. It could be inside your closet. Make it a wonderful spot so when you feel the need to express yourself and have to get some things off of your chest, you can go to this area, you can go to this space and write, 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 or paint, 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 or you know, uh, sketch, 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 whatever it is that you need to do. 
create a space where you feel inspired. Maybe it's your space where you can go and meditate. Maybe it's your space where you can go and just get quiet and get closer to God. Maybe it's your space where you can go again and get closer to God by reading your Bible. Whatever that space is for you, create it. Immerse yourself in that space. Because so many ideas are going to come up for you. So many ideas are going to come up for you. But you got to get started. Again, you got to get started. That is the hardest thing for everybody. Even working on yourself, you got to get started. The eighth way to work on yourself is to read more. You know, I, the, you guys know that I read all the time. I tell you that. Actually, I have another book review coming up really soon. I read all the time. I read articles. I read books. I read. I just read. I read all the time. I, you guys know that I read the, the posts that they have on Facebook. And sometimes I'll come here and do a video about that. I read all the time because you just never know the information that you're reading about when it is going to resurface. I actually heard, um, I'm pretty sure I got this from Eric Thomas in one of his motivational videos and how he always talks about that very thing that you could be reading about. You never know if it could actually save your life one day. And I know that that is very dramatic, but again, you just really never know the things that you're reading about when that information is going to resurface, going to pop up at the very moment that you need it. And you'll be able to regurgitate the very thing that you actually read about, even if it was many years ago. And this does not have to be about a particular subject either. You can read about a plethora of things. Anything that piques your interest, read about that thing. Again, it's going to spark something up here and your creative juices are going to start working. It is going to help you to identify some of the things that you can actually start doing and exploring. Maybe you like this thing that you're reading about and you want to go and try it yourself. You just never know where your inspiration is going to come from. So read, read, read. The ninth thing that you could do for yourself is to actually write a letter to yourself and read it. I mean, keep it. Definitely keep it, right? Keep it, and then the next five years, open it up. See if you match up or getting closer to that person that you wanted to be five years prior. Have you gone way off the path? Or actually, are you going toward that person that you wanted to become five years ago, five years earlier. How close have you become to actually bringing that person into fruition? The 10th and final thing to start working on yourself is actually to identify your blind spots. Now, you have to think about your blind spots when we talk about our eyes. In your eyes, you know, there's something that you can't see or even when you're driving. When you're driving, there's a blind spot off to the side, right? You don't really necessarily know what's over there. Identify your blind spots. The way to identify your blind spot is just to ask one of your friends who's always around you, who's always in your company, and they can hear some of the things that you've always been saying, but they've never even addressed it with you. They just there. But really, when you leave, they're like, okay, I can see X, Y, and Z, or that thing ain't gonna work out, or whatever it is. Not that they're necessarily hating on you or being negative because they never even brought it to you. They're just thinking they can identify your blind spots better than you because when you're too close to the situation, you can't really see what's going on. You have the blinders. Again, the blind spot. The blinders are on. So ask your close friend and they're really probably not going to tell you right away. So what you tell them is, hey, I'm really trying to work on myself. And so I really, I don't really know what's going on, what I need to work on. I don't understand what my blockers are. So maybe you can help me out. And then just tell them to, hey, I know you think I'm playing. I'm not going to get upset, but I really need for you to be truthful with me because I don't know what I need to work on. This one in particular is how you can start working on yourself rapidly because they've already identified your blind spots for you that you didn't even realize that you had. And so this could be a starting point for you to start working on yourself so you can be the best you that can ever work out to be because if you're trying to be somebody else, you will always fail because that person is already taken up. The best person that you can be is yourself.